Hello, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Hack, and in this podcast, we'll be reviewing cardiac output. The amount of blood that is pumped out of the left or right ventricle each minute is called the cardiac output. It is often symbolized as CO and is usually expressed in units as milliliters of blood per minute. Cardiac output is equal to the stroke volume symbolized by SV, which is the amount of blood ejected out of the ventricle during each contraction, multiplied by the heart rate symbolized by HR, which is the number of heartbeats per minute, often written as BPM. The equation is often written as CO, cardiac output, is equal to SV, stroke volume, multiplied by HR, heart rate. For an average adult male at rest, stroke volume is equal to 70 milliliters of blood per beat, with a heart rate of 75 beats per minute. The average cardiac output would be 70 milliliters per beat multiplied by 75 beats per minute, which is equal to 5,250 milliliters per minute, which is equivalent to five and a quarter liters of blood per minute. Approximately the total blood volume of about five liters. This is equivalent to filling two and a half two liter soft drink bottles with blood every minute. Cardiac output can increase with an increase in stroke volume or an increase in heart rates or an increase in both of these factors. During moderate exercise, for example, cardiac output can more than double to 10 liters per minute with a stroke volume of 100 milliliters per beat and a heart rate equal to 100 beats per minute, and can quadruple during intense exercise at around 20 liters per minute with a stroke volume equal to 130 milliliters per minute multiplied by a heart rate of 150 beats per minute. The difference between an individual's resting cardiac output and maximum cardiac output during activity is called the cardiac reserve. For most people, the cardiac reserve is four to five times their resting cardiac output. Athletes, especially endurance athletes like marathon runners, may have a cardiac reserve seven or eight times their resting cardiac output. Some people, such as those with serious heart disease, may have little to no cardiac reserve, which limits even the simplest of physical activities. There are three main factors that help regulate stroke volume in order to make sure that both the right and left ventricles are pumping equal amounts of blood. They are preload, contractility, and afterload. Preload is the amount of stretch or tension on the cardiac muscle fibers before the ventricles contract. With the greater the stretch or preload, the greater the force of contraction. This is similar to stretching a rubber band. The more you stretch it, the stronger it'll snap back. As the ventricles fill with blood during diastole or relaxation, the more the cardiac muscle fibers will stretch, which will produce a stronger force of contraction during systole. This relationship between preload and blood volume, in particular end diastolic blood volume, the amount of blood in the ventricles at the end of diastole, is referred to as the Frank Starling Law of the Heart. In general, the higher the end diastolic volume, the stronger the force of contraction. There are two important influences on end diastolic volume, the length of time of ventricular diastole, and venous return, the amount of blood returning to the right ventricle. 
As heart rate increases, the time spent in ventricular diastole decreases. This results in a smaller EDV and premature ventricular systole, with the ventricles contracting before they are full. During rapid heart rates of more than 160 beats per minute, stroke volume decreases because of a shorter ventricular diastole. This results in a smaller EDV and a smaller preload. Those with slower resting heart rates often have a larger resting stroke volume because they have a longer ventricular diastole and a larger preload. When there is an increase in venous return, such as during exercise, EDV increases as more blood is flowing into the ventricles. This causes the cardiac muscle fibers to stretch more, which creates a stronger force of contraction, which leads to a higher stroke volume. The Frank-Starling law of the heart helps the right and left ventricles eject an equal volume of blood, making sure that the amount of blood flowing into the pulmonary and systemic circulations is the same. If the left ventricle pumps out a little bit more blood than the right ventricle, the venous return into the right ventricle will increase. This results in a higher EDV in the right ventricle, increasing its preload, which causes it to contract more strongly during the next cardiac cycle, restoring the blood volume balance. Contractility of the cardiac muscle fibers is the second important factor that regulates stroke volume. Contractility refers to the strength of contraction relative to the preload. There are a variety of chemical substances and influences that can increase or decrease contractility. Positive inotropic agents increase contractility by increasing stroke volume. They include various chemicals and factors that help enhance the movement of calcium ions into cardiac muscle fibers, resulting in a stronger force of contraction. Examples of positive inotropic effects include stimulation of the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system, which is nicknamed the fight or flight division. Hormones, such as epinephrine and norepinephrine, higher concentrations of calcium ions in the interstitial fluid, and the drug digitalis. Negative inotropic agents often reduce or inhibit the flow of calcium ions into cardiac muscle fibers, which lowers the strength of the heart's contraction. Examples include inhibition of the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system, anoxia, acidosis, and some anesthetics, higher interstitial concentrations of potassium ions, and drugs such as calcium channel blockers. Afterload refers to the back pressure that the ventricles must overcome in order to eject blood out of the heart. The right ventricle must generate enough pressure to exceed the afterload pressure in the pulmonary trunk, around 20 millimeters of mercury, while the left ventricle must exceed the afterload pressure in the aorta, around 80 millimeters of mercury. When these afterload pressures are overcome, blood can be ejected through the semilunar valves into these vessels. Anything that can restrict blood flow will increase afterload. When afterload increases due to hypertension, high blood pressure, or atherosclerosis, a narrowing of the arteries, stroke volume decreases, which causes more blood to stay in the ventricles after they contract during systole.